All right, today I'm replacing the AV three and a half inch coil springs and shocks on my 2013 Jeep Wrangler JK. I'm replacing them with the exact same things that are coming off because what's on there now has been on there for over 100,000 miles. So they're saggy and worn and it's time to give the Jeep yet another new lease on life. Special thank you to OK Four Wheel Drive in New Jersey for sourcing the parts. Now I'm going to shoot this video from the hip today using my GoPro because I just want to get this done. So don't expect a step-by-step how-to video. Although if you're doing similar work on your own Jeep, you might be able to glean some information from it. I'm going to start with the back. Take off the old shocks, disconnect the sway bar, jack up each corner individually, and hopefully shimmy those old springs out of there. All of these were loosened, turned loose by hand before zapping them off. These might have lost their luster, but to be honest, they still seem pretty good. There's a good amount of spring to them. Here comes the fun part. I need to put this wheel up, take it off, and then do some jack stand gymnastics. Flex out the rear end and pop out the rear coil. Well, here they are side by side, brand new versus five, six years old. And spring 222-30B, 222-30B. And you can see that uh, the new spring is certainly much longer. Alright, I put that wheel back on, I lowered it to the ground, and uh, there's the new spring. And I also reconnected the passenger side rear sway bar and link, leaving the driver's side disconnected until I get that done.
a little bit more slack out of this one, so I'm going to make this quick. driver side spring, passenger side spring. Now I just have to lower it down, put the shocks on, and we are done with the back. That's the back. I'll let this down. And it's late in the afternoon. It took a while since I was doing camera work too. So I am going to finish the front tomorrow. Cheers to a job well done and it's on to the back tomorrow. Things went smoothly today, no broken bolts, no, I didn't draw that much blood. So I hope tomorrow it goes just as smoothly. Both front shocks are disconnected at the bottom. Now I am going to disconnect the front sway bar at the dashboard. going to need a little bit more persuasion. I forgot about the bump stop extension inside the spring, which might complicate things a little bit, but we're almost there. spacer out my work is easy or I could use the pry bar pry bar uh, although I might still have to remove this to get the other spring in This is probably the most difficult part. I can't get on top of it. I've got too much in my engine compartment, but I managed to squeeze an Allen wrench in here.
these posts at the top of the shock have hex sockets in the top of them so you can hold the shaft while loosening or tightening the nylock nut. This prevents the shaft from spinning, but the challenging part is actually fitting this inside the fender well. There's just enough room. Here's the old driver's side front spring compared to the new one. And just like the rear one yesterday, it's a little bit shorter. This was the one that had the arc to it. And I don't see any significant deformity now that it's out. It might not have been seated correctly, or there's a hairline fracture in there somewhere that I just can't see. Nevertheless, we'll get this in and make sure it's seated right. Well, I went to remove the bump stop extension and I broke the bolt that was holding it down. It's a little bit rusty. Could be worse. All I have to do is get replacement hardware. If I don't have it, I run to the hardware store. But pain in the butt. Everything was going really smooth until now. All right, I can't in good conscience put everything back together without replacing these bumpers. This is a foam jounce bumper and it's dry rotten. The one on the passenger side is already self-destructed. The Jeep dealer doesn't have them, but I think I found them locally at Advance Auto. Ugh. That was a little bit of a speed bump in the project, but I am back from the store. These two jounce bumpers. This is a Dorman part number 523258. Right, so that's taken care of. Broken bolt is replaced by these two grade 8 bolts. Might as well do the passenger side too. right now okay that was fun need is a 17 millimeter ratcheting box wrench. I can do this bit a little bit faster. So I'm sitting down making myself comfortable. I'm gonna be here for a minute. Look at this bump stop. I think it's a good thing that I got new ones today. As much as these are pain in the butt to swap out. I have no idea what the trick is to getting these bump stops in aside from lubrication and foul language, so please bear with me. The ratchet strap seems to help a little bit. Oh. 
course this side went right in and the last side was ridiculously stubborn Ugh. all right so this was sitting in the sun for a little bit so heat and palm olive This is it, the moment of truth. Speed bump. So fine. The steering wheel is just a hair to the left, but that makes sense. It probably came up about an inch in the front, so I might need a toe and go, but this is great. Another speed bump. So satisfying. I'm gonna go to the car wash because it makes sense to go to the car wash after you're done installing the suspension. And then I'm gonna take the Jeep to a parking lot to get some glamour shots. So stick around if you wanna see those, but if not, thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this video. See you next week.